So Alan and John, yeah. welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming and chatting with us about your collaboration. Pleasure. Have you folks known each other for a while? Um, yes, we have, actually. Tell the story, tell the story, tell the story. Okay. Tell the story. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, John uh, met my daughter, my oldest daughter, Sika. Mm -hmm. She was ha having a concert with Stanley. Where was that? It was in Stock City, right? Eirabakki. Eirabakki, okay. Yep. Eirabakki. And, and he really liked their music. And so they were friends, right, John? Yeah, so I talked to her. I talked to... Um, I talked to Sitka after this little concert. She was doing this project with her um, with her husband at the time. Right. Um, Stanley. Yeah. Yeah, with Stanley. And I really love that picnic record. I still think it's mm -hmm. wonderful. And I it even is. got myself a bunch of copies of it so that I could give it to other people because mm -hmm. I really liked it. And so, um, you know, because I was really impressed because the thing is, in the United States, when somebody says, hey, do you want to go listen to somebody play the guitar in somebody's living room on Sunday? Yeah. The answer is, for me, it's always no. It's like, no, I don't <laughs> want to do that. And so I sort of felt the same. They were like, hey, yeah, let's go down to this. My friend is going to have a couple of people playing in his living room on Sunday. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my goodness. And so... Um, but I said yes, and uh, I went down there, and it was just a beautiful place, and it was right on the ocean, and it's this, you know, they have this stage set up in the living room, and right behind you, all you see is, it's floor-to-ceiling windows, yeah. and you just have the ocean there. Mm -hmm. And then it was Stany and Sitka, and I had no idea who they were, and they sat down and did their thing, and I was just like, wow, they're really good. Mm -hmm. um, so I was glad that I was able to allow myself to be open for the experience, and she and I, and Stainy, we all became friends as a result of that because I, you know, went up, you know, blabbing to them afterwards, <laughs> and um, and you know, just sort of raving about how great their performance was. And I think they liked hearing that because you know when they showed up that day, they had the kids, and you know, they look they look like any couple who's just you know finally gotten the kids out of the house and put their clothes on and into the car on a Sunday morning, you know, just yeah. like. Yeah. Oh God, you know, just yeah. all that stuff. And so I think it was nice for them to hear that too. So yeah. anyway, um, <clears throat> I became friends with that family, the whole family. And the, as a result, I met Ellen mm -hmm. and I went with them on Easter, my yeah. first year here in Iceland. I went with them to um, see this year yeah. for their annual Easter hangout. And they do a little concert there. And I even sang one of my songs. Mm -hmm. They invited me to sing something with them. Yeah. But yeah, I just sort of, you know, I sort of got absorbed into that family very quickly. And so they were very um, instrumental into helping me get settled in Iceland. Wonderful. Oh. That's yeah. a nice story. Yeah. 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 So how did this, have you co collaborated on, on stuff before, before this collaboration? Uh, no. Funny enough. Yeah, funny enough. We haven't. Okay, and it is. A... I, I, sorry to interrupt you. So, oh, so you I just, I, I never want to do anything. I have trouble, you know, doing my own stuff, and so doing stuff with other people is like, <laughs> it's it's difficult, and I don't really want to do it usually, you know. Um, but you know, I said yes to this because of who Ellen is to me. I didn't know about the song yet, so I went into the studio. I don't know whether I listened to it. Before, I don't, think so. you just said I don't yes. think so. I just went in cold yeah. and, yeah. and um, you know, for me, it was more about you know who I was going to be with, mm -hmm. yeah, and that it was it was a good thing for me to do because I know these people and I I love these people, and so this is a comfortable environment for me to be open to doing something, you know, mm -hmm. and then the song turned out to be great, and and so that's a, another bonus, and mm -hmm. I felt very comfortable in the studio. With them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Okay. And Kitty was with us. So it was. Yeah, really Kitty was at the nice control. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Goyukur also played the same day. Yeah. Yes. Goyukur, the harmonica genius. Yeah. He's everywhere now. Yeah, he's everywhere. Well, good thing. 
But I was like, uh, really, like, really, John, are you going to sing it with me in Icelandic? He said, yes, sure. <laughs> yes, because your Icelandic is exceptional, John. Yeah. It's very, very yeah. good. Oh, thank you. It is. You know, I, I have never taken a beating, a linguistic beating, like I've taken with um, Icelandic. It's an extremely humbling experience. I just, you know, the only thing you can do is just keep trying, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, and this was another, this was another thing where I thought, you know, you should, because I, I did sing that song with, you know, Helgi Björs on the 17th of June when I first came here. I sang that song mm -hmm. from Jón Helgason. Mm -hmm. um, was it Austasark? Yeah. Austasark which is a really beautiful song. Mm -hmm. But I remember, um, I rem I, this person will remain nameless, but I remember somebody <laughs> telling a friend of mine, yeah, I really love the original, but his, uh, his, his accent is so horrible, it just totally ruined it for me. And so, <laughs> you know, I thought, um, you know, maybe I'll, let's see if I've made some progress too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am slowly making progress, so I appreciate you saying that. Yes. You are making progress, mm -hmm. which is very positive. Yes. <laughs> but the song is, is, if I'm correct, it's penned by you, Ellen. You wrote yeah. the song. I wrote the song a couple of years back, and I was staying in France, in Paris. Or, um, but I, my lyrics were in English. So, Brian Valdemar, he, he made the Icelandic one. Okay. Are, are you thinking of doing an English version of this, or are you content with the Icelandic one? Um, people have been asking me. Uh, they, I don't. I don't think we should give it to them. I think they should. No. I think. We, I think they should be forced to. Because <laughs> you know, aren't we? Aren't we sort of done spoon feeding people? You know, it's yeah, just like, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe why don't we try out a different language for once and see? Because there's some, you know, that. I don't know. It's it's pretty annoying. And what's interesting is that you told me you wrote the song in Bangkok and that it was originally in Spanish. <laughs> and that you were working yeah. at the bar there. Wow. Yeah, I can't you remember anything that, anymore. So you, you know. Said you were living with a couple of prostitutes and yeah. working in a bar, yeah. although you yourself were not I, engaged in that lifestyle. Well, thank yet. you. Okay, that's true. Yeah. A little bit. So this is oh, interesting no, for me to hear this whole story about it being in Icelandic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So, and you don't know about it, it's going to be all over with others. And yes. Other. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the next tune you do, you do it in uh, Icelandic or even Faroese. Oh. Have you checked funny. out Faroese, John? I have. It makes me want to scream and run to the hills. <laughs> but did I, they actually just sent me a post because they wanted to have, they, their, this song is on their playlist now. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, so. it's, I think it's a really beautiful language and I'm a big fan of Danish too. So yeah, I, I love Danish and I, I, I think you can be funny in Danish in a way that you can't be funny in other languages mm -hmm. um, just because of the language itself. So I think it just seems like an exact amalgamation of Icelandic and Danish. And it's fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful yeah. language. It's really strange. But yeah. they're beautiful. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And of course, I love Ever. Yeah. So, you know. But you know, um, I, I don't know if you have time for this, but I, I, I was supposed to play at the G Festival there many years ago. Yeah. And uh, there was a little patch of fog over the airport when we were supposed to land. And it stayed there all day. So we couldn't land. So they took us to Wick, Scotland. And we spent the night in Wick, Scotland. The next day we went back and the same patch of fog was still over the airport so they couldn't land again. So they took us to Bergen, Norway and we spent the night in Bergen, Norway. Okay. The third day, after the festival was over already and everybody had gone home, we went to, we were diverted a third time and went to Copenhagen. Okay. So it took four days to get back to Reykjavik, and we never made it to no, Faroe Island. No, this is, I know, I've heard this. Yeah, it was, it was, That's the only way to go there. Yeah. You can't take a ship, though. Uh, the boat. It was a nightmare. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, John. But back on yes. track, are you, are you folks planning any more collaborations? Yeah. Be that in different languages or other languages even? Or Icelandic? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's it's a it is a difficult thing to get 
I mean, this this COVID time has been quite special because we both had, you know, everybody's got time to do things that they didn't have to do otherwise. Now I've got another album campaign starting. And so I'm, you know, already starting to panic about that and get sucked into all the interviews and all the stuff that goes along with that. Right. But yeah, it would be fun to do something. Um, it would be really fun to, because, you know, Ellen has such a, I'm really sorry that I'm blabbing, but I have a lot to say about this subject. Ellen has such a beautiful, clear, pristine, crisp, and simple instrument, which I think is so refreshing in this world of people who are just, you know, doing all these horrible things with their voices. Um, <laughs> it's really nice to hear somebody singing a tone and holding that tone for more than a millisecond, you know? So a good example is, what's the name of your Christmas song? I keep forgetting the name. Um, and uh, hey, him, nurse maid. Yeah. Hey, him, nurse maid, yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah, so. I mean, you can just feel every muscle in your body relax mm -hmm. when you when you sing that song because it's so it, it's so refreshing to hear such pure, beautiful. And by simple, I don't mean not nuanced and complex, but I just mean, you know, not doing all these melismatic mm -hmm. acrobatics that people are doing. It's a very refreshing thing to hear. So Thank I think you. you know, you sort of remind me a little bit of like. Um, it could be cool to do something like a, a Jane Burke and Serge Gainsbourg type of thing. Really? Yeah. Say that again. You know, like a Jane Burke and uh, Serge Gainsbourg type of you know, song. Mm -hmm. You know, like get an orchestra involved and do some beautiful yeah, yeah. orchestration and, yeah. and, and play around, you know, with. Oh, my with, goodness. Um, yeah. I would I'll have to hold that. you guys to that, actually. We should do that, John. Or you know Nancy and Nancy and Lee Greenwood or Lee Hazelwood. Yeah. Yeah. Hazel, yeah. Yeah. Those are the types of things that I think of. You know. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Yeah. We so we just have to, yeah. you know, we have to. You have to create a world. We have to create a world. We have to find something that we both feel really mm -hmm. strongly and excited yeah. about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, you know. I feel like it's so dangerous when you when you have something that really works with somebody, it can be very, you can make some huge mistakes right after yeah. that if you're not careful. I know, I know, that's, that's true, that's that's really, and, and you know, I have so many songs, but I really don't know what to do with it now because I've had them for so long, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. So there's stuff there to work with. I mean, we're yeah. both totally open to it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I am, I am. Me too. So that makes yeah. two of us. You're not going to be able to tour it until next autumn, John, are you? No. I'm not going to be able to tour until um, September. Mm -hmm. hmm. And even that is, um, well, it, I don't, right now it looks like September is going to be fine for the UK. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you, you would never know, you know. No. I do need to make some money though, because it's been a year. <laughs> it's been over a year now. You know? Yeah. <laughs> It's a yeah it's, yeah. it's really and but the the COVID thing like you were just saying before it's um it's a very strange world we live in now you know but but like you said this would have happened you know if you would have been on the road so you know going to the television to, to the TV station with me and and the, you know, these things, what we're doing now, so, but I'm not saying that I love COVID, <laughs> but it's, yeah. it is changing a lot though. And I, I, I just have to think it's going to be a good thing that it's going to change, you know, for the better, for the better, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I see, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm very grateful for the time I've had here, you know, mm -hmm even though at times the isolation has been quite difficult, but you know, that's partly due to who I am as a person because mm -hmm. not much different than I was without COVID, you know, mm -hmm. but um, I just love, I love being at home and being able to play with my records and my books yeah. and yeah. 
all the things that you know you buy when you're out on tour that you never have yeah. time to yeah. listen to because you're always leaving again. Yeah. And I think I was really starting to reach sort of a burnout point with all the traveling. Yeah. And you know, it's all, you know your friends and family. They're like, oh, shut up. You know, you get to go to. <laughs> but I think if you haven't done that, and Siggy, you know what I'm talking about. That yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. It's very challenging. Sure, it's it's great when you're young and. Um, but it has it has consequences that you can't necessarily see in the moment for sure mm -hmm. about just being able to live your simple life on a day to day basis, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've exceeded the time, and we've actually gotten some wonderful side trackings, which I didn't yeah. expect. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. But thanks a lot for your time, guys. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for uh, being with us. Then... Yeah, thanks for um, thanks for your patience and getting it organized. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>